Hey everybody, I'm back with another Love is Blind recap. Do you remember how in last episode's recap, I said that Jeremy truly triggers me in episode 11? Well, let's get into why that is. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on Love is Blind recap and other pop culture and reality TV news. So at this point, we kick it off with the rest of the pod squad arriving to the lake house, including Sarah Ann. And you can just see in Laura's face that she is absolutely furious with that girl as she should be but we don't get to see a confrontation between the two of them instead we get trevor pulling chelsea aside for a private conversation and he asks her again if she would say yes if he was the one who proposed first and this time she can definitively say no in the pause a little unsure which was weird right considering she just agreed to spend the rest of her life with somebody and she wasn't unsure okay but now she knows but she does throw Trevor a bone by telling him that he is her usual type. And at this point, Trevor really trying to play into the nice guy image that he has curated. He brags about crying his eyes out when she rejected him. And honestly, he just looks absolutely pathetic. Now that we know that he was out here thotting and bopping with married women and colluding with them to get onto this show. Like he just disgusts me at this point. What a goofy dude. And I'm sorry, but he's not even, he's not even attractive to me anyway. Now moving along, Laura and Jeremy finally confront their relationship issues and this is where Jeremy like really triggered me I like about jumped out of my seat ready to elbow him right in the nose okay because guess what look he's like trying to play victim remember this man practically cheated on Laura in my opinion he cheated I think he kissed Sarah and like he lied about his whereabouts and everything he was out until five in the morning with her he was at her house and everything like he is a really bad guy but he's trying to make himself appear to be the victim because he's like, oh, like you wouldn't even let me send you flowers. I wanna apologize, but you're being mean to me. Like she is acting how anybody would act if their fiance cheated on them the way that Jeremy cheated on Laura with Sarah Ann, okay? And so at this point, he claims that she sent him a really, really rude text message when he asked to send her flowers. She's like, no, all I said was no, thank you. Pull up the text, show the text. If you're thinking, if you're telling people that I said something rude to you, pull up the text. To me, I was like, oh my God, this guy is a full blown narc because I believe Laura, right? Like he could have pulled up the text. He could have quoted her word for word, but he shut down because he knew she was telling the truth. He was trying to make her look crazy by lying about the situation. And again, I like I said last uh, episode, if you guys have ever been in that situation, you know that it just, it gives you a visceral level of anger because guess what happens with men like this? They do that on purpose to set you off. And now you're out here looking crazy and like, you know, yelling this, that, and the other. And the guy is all calm knowing that he did this on purpose to you. I don't like that at all. I'm disgusted by this man. I think he's a total waste of air and I just I despise him congratulations Sarah Ann for taking this full-blown psycho off of Laura's hand you are going to suffer just as much if not more than Laura did he is a truly truly terrible person and I'm so happy that Laura told him to f off because that is what he deserved I just I can't stand people like that who wind you up and then play calm to make you look crazy absolutely not now um AD she decides to confront Sarah Ann about her trifling activities this all started with the DM that Sarah Ann had sent to Jeremy when she got her social media back after he dumped her from the pods right she said listen if the door is still open you know where to find me basically and ad said that's not cool you don't send messages like that when you know that the person's engaged like that's just giving thirsty it's giving weirdo and here's the thing i agree with ad she said everything a thousand percent right and i really do hope that at the reunion laura gives her a profound apology and I'm disgusted that she still hasn't to this date given a public apology to AD for that bean dip joke where she told Jeremy to S-A-A-D. You know, because AD is a nice person for going to bat for Laura, but I would not have gone to bat for Laura just based off the bean dip thing that she told Jeremy to do to her. You know what I mean? Like that goes to show you how much of a girl's girl AD truly is. And by the way, did you guys notice like Sarah Ann just kept on smirking when AD was talking? And like when she was talking about like her trifling encounter with Jeremy, like I just, 
oh, put the fist down, Grace. Like, I, you would think I was violent by the way I talk, but I've never actually hit anybody, you guys. But like, I like to think like, mm, piss me off and uh, you know, I think it's just the people in TV who piss me off a lot. In real life, I'm lucky that people don't really piss me off like that. But I'm always like ready to like punch someone on the show. Like she was just smirking. Like she isn't like a whole ass bird. That man dumped you. Then you went on DMs to go and chase him again. Like, are you not embarrassed? And like, now we all see him for what he is, which is a narcissistic gaslighting psycho. And you're proud that that's your man. Look at the screen. This is your man. Really? Like, good luck with that, Sarah Ann. My God. So now she claims though, Sarah Ann, that uh, Jeremy had always left the door open for their relationship. She even said when he dumped me, like he didn't want to do this. It's like, okay, pick me, Sha. Like if he really didn't want to dump you, he wouldn't have dumped you. Like you are so dumb. You are really dumb for real. What are you talking about? Like did someone force him to dump you? No, he just liked Laura better than you. And you have a hard time accepting that. And it's sad. So she's like, yeah, that's why I sent the message in the first place okay girl and then um we talk about the lost and found meetup in the parking lot that doesn't exist apparently it's only like two parking spaces or something and nobody's gonna let you just sit around talking for hours when they're trying to find parking at that place like no um so she claims that jeremy just dropped her off at home but they didn't kiss or go upstairs or anything like that i don't believe her the amount of tension and love in the air and just excitement you know after the experience that they went through and everything I'm sorry, but I know they were banging like a screen door in a hurricane, okay? We need to get like her neighbors on the line. I'm sure they heard something. <laughs> now, Sarah Ann then goes a step further and claims that Jeremy had told her that he was trying to break up with Laura, which is interesting because in his victim, self-victimization tour, Jeremy has been claiming that he's been trying to make it work with Laura and to apologize to her and everything like that, make it right, but that she's being mean. Then why did you go and tell her before you even cheated and she was angry with you that, you know what I mean? That like the whole thing is just not adding up. At the end of the day, Jeremy is a common denominator here and Jeremy is trash, okay? So again, I'm glad AD dragged her, but at the same time, I don't know, like to me it was like, let that girl fight for herself because Laura is a tough cookie. You know, I've been saying this from the very beginning. I feel like her personality is very abrasive and very brash and very negative as it is. So she totally could have handled this on her own. I would have loved to see Laura confront Sarah Ann on her own. I don't think she needed AD to be her spokesperson. So Sarah Ann was obviously triggered by AD calling her out. So she goes off to talk to Jeremy in private. And she's like playing the victim about the situation. She's like, I'm being painted as someone I'm not. Like I didn't do anything to hurt anybody. But at the same time, love is not perfect. It's not linear. So I'm not gonna apologize. Like, all right, girl. Um, so of course, Jeremy agrees with everything she's saying now that they're boning and he needs to look good and make you know the whole leaving Laura thing worthwhile. And then Sarah Ann says that she didn't come here to make friends. All right, Miss Bachelorette. And Jeremy tells her that he made the wrong decision in the pods. And then they head off to ride jet skis as Laura cries over the betrayal. But Laura doesn't cry in front of the group, okay? Laura, she cries only like in her confessionals when she's talking to us one-on-one -on -one about the situation. And then something kind of interesting happens, which is basically, and I think it happened earlier, but I forgot. But Trevor's like, you know, Laura was like one of my top picks, but ooh, she's mean. And I'm like, listen, Trevor, you were seeing Seeing her in a very angry state she just got cheated on a man who's out there riding on jet skis with like you know his mistress like please cut her some slack but at the same time Laura is mean you know like she's fundamentally mean so he is kind of right there too he's it seemed like he was very much turned off by her which I understand but at the same time you're a cheater Trevor go where where's that married woman that you're out here boning you know and scheming with get out of here so anyway um Laura cries saying that Jeremy never really chose her and that he should have never involved her in his situation. He should have just gone with Sarah Ann from the start. And now we're finally out of the lake house from hell. By the way, did we talk about the chat between Jimmy and Jessica? Was that in episode 10? But basically he tells her that she's still his number one pick, which was very weird because he's engaged to someone else, someone very insecure, who's gonna flip her lid when she sees that if they're not already married or whatever if they're already married. Um, but anyway, nothing too major there. Not a lot of drama. You can tell that Jessica and Chelsea actually are friends, which is wonderful, you know, not to have that cattiness there and the backstabbing. Um, so now we're out of the late house and the couples seem very happy on some of their later dates. So Jimmy and Chelsea go ice carving, Clay and AD paint sneakers. 
Meanwhile, Amy and Johnny start wedding planning and they talk about her hyphenating her last name, but their kids getting his last name. And then they also talk about contraception again and how Johnny didn't know that vasectomies were meant to be irreversible. Mm, these two are so clueless. Honestly, they, they seem kind of slow sometimes when they talk about contraception. I'm like, y'all, like y'all didn't get sex ed in school because this is weird at this age. Like y'all don't have Google to be looking these things up. Y'all don't have chat GPT to be asking questions. Like, what is this? Are y'all okay? So anyway, Amy ultimately decides to consider getting onto birth control since men don't really have many birth control options, unfortunately. And um, I start kind of like, tuning it out because at this point I don't care anymore but we get to the end and everybody starts shopping for their wedding dresses and their tuxedos and so I thought that was super duper lovely like I thought that AD looked stunning in both of her wedding dresses but I do think that the second one was best for her her body is snatched the white pops so well against her dark skin she looks incredible no offense to the other girls but can and to any of you who wore those lace dresses as your wedding dress but the way that this lace dress has been done to death since like 2016, like I feel like a lot of these girls just every season keep wearing the same lace dress. Like it's enough, you guys. <laughs> so anyway, Chelsea and Jimmy hang out at the amusement park for their, you know, last, last date. And they tell each other that they love each other. And then he says that he is ready to marry her. And she acts hesitant about whether or not she's ready to marry him when he asks her if that's the case. And then we we're left on that cliffhanger ending. But to be honest with you guys, I think she's going to say yes, because they just had this huge knock down drag out fight about her claiming that she doesn't believe Jimmy loves her. So if she were to do that again, like it would be over, over. And I don't think she wants it to be over like that. And I genuinely do think that she wants to marry this man. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, that's it. That's a recap of what went down on Love is Blind season six, episode 11. What did you think about it overall? I'm happy that we're about to get to the actual weddings at this point, because a lot of these conversations are starting to become rather repetitive. The contraception, Clay's battle with cheating, Chelsea being upset at everything Jimmy does and just being super duper insecure. Like, it's good, you know, like let's move on at this point. So I am, um, you know, looking forward to seeing how everybody ultimately ends up responding. So I will just give you guys some of my predictions here. So obviously we know that Laura and Jeremy are not gonna make it down the aisle. So that one's out of the running. When it comes to Clay and AD, I feel like they're both going to say no. When it comes to Amy and Johnny, I, I wouldn't be surprised if one of them blindsided us and said no. And I feel like perhaps that person would be Amy, to be honest with you, because remember, Johnny is not really her physical type. So although he's there emotionally and stuff, can't she get over the physical stuff after all? Who knows? Um, and to be honest with you guys, I don't know that I see that relationship lasting long, even if they do get married. Um, who else is there? Ah, Chelsea and Jimmy. When it comes to Chelsea and Jimmy, I feel like they're the type of people who want to fight as much as possible in the beginning of a relationship so they can say they got all the kinks out and now it should be smooth sailing from there. So I'm kind of 60, 40 on them towards them getting married. So I will just go ahead and say, yes, I do. I do think that they will get married, but again, do I think they'll last? No, not really. So what about you guys? Who do you think is gonna say yes at the altar? Who is going to say no? And by the way, if someone were to say no in the Chelsea Jimmy combination, I would say that it would probably be Chelsea. Maybe she can't get over the friendship stuff, you know, like the female friends and stuff. Who knows? But I want to know all of you guys' predictions. So please definitely do leave them in the comment section in addition to your overall thoughts about the episode. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.